Hey everybody, this is Mr. Piercy, and in this lesson what we're going to be looking at is how uh, to find the area of triangles and parallelograms, or maybe if you're given the area of one of those figures, how we find one of the missing uh, side lengths. So the most common thing that uh, students get taught about area is usually you start learning about area way back in uh, elementary school and what your geometry or your math teacher, whoever you had at the time, uh, typically what they'll do is they'll give you some rectangular shape like this and then what they do is they kind of divide it up into segments like this where uh, each each of those are going to be made up of uh, centimeter blocks. And that's how they introduce you to the idea of area of a rectangle. Uh, and also maybe how to find the perimeter of the rectangle. Uh, well, a rectangle is this is when you would get introduced to, this would be like the, your math teacher might have said, this is the length and this is the height and you can make the connection that when you counted up all of those centimeter squares uh, you could have multiplied the length and the height together and it would equal the number of squares that you counted inside of the figure. So I'm not going to necessarily go into the idea of how to prove that the area of a rectangle or a parallelogram is the base times height or the length times the width. Uh, I accept that you guys have been taught at some previous lesson, at some previous stage in your educational careers that uh, area of a rectangle is base times height or length times width, and that the area of a triangle you should know it is half of the base and the height. Well, one of the things that we need to understand here is, first of all, do you understand, do you know what to name certain parts of a figure in order to be able to find the area or to find the height. So here we have a parallelogram and the bases of a parallelogram are literally either of the two parallel sides. Uh, most people think of base as being something that's at the bottom of the figure. Uh, they like to look at for maybe something that's going to be horizontal, uh, but that doesn't always register as the base of a figure. In this case, of a, for a parallelogram, the base of a parallelogram are either set of parallel size. The height of the parallelogram, which is sometimes referred to as the altitude, uh, the height of the parallelogram is going to be the perpendicular distance between the two bases. Uh, so as you can see in the diagram that I provided for you here, uh, we could have the horizontal segments as the base and the vertical perpendicular segment that connects them as the height, or we can have the diagonal ones as the base, and again, the perpendicular distance between them would be the height. So there's more than one way to find the height uh, or, or classify the bases of a parallelogram. So here, these are again, just kind of postulates. Remember, postulate meaning something I can accept is true without somebody necessarily having to explain why it's true. Uh, since a square is a type of parallelogram and the area of a parallelogram is the length times the width or the base times the height, well in a square, uh, because the sides are the same, if I say area is equal to length times width and uh, in a square that would be like saying area is equal to length times length or width times width, oops, width. So we usually just refer to that as the side. Squared, because anytime, anytime something is multiplied to itself in math, we say that that is side squared. Uh, the area addition postulate, very similar to segment addition and angle addition that we've covered it before, uh, way back at the beginning of the, the school year, uh, area addition is just me saying the area of this composite shape 
is the sum of these two things. So on the left, I have kind of a square looking shape and a rectangular looking shape. So the area of that composite shape, meaning both of those quadrilaterals together, is total 25. It's the sum of those two things. So area of a rectangle, again, because it's a parallelogram, we would say length times width or base times height, whatever you're used to saying. Uh, the area of a parallelogram and the area of a rectangle are basically the same thing. Uh, of course, the only real difference between a parallelogram and a rectangle is a uh, parallelogram or with the rectangle, the interior angles are going to have, are, are all going to be congruent. They're all going to be right angles. So the area of a triangle is one half times the base times the height. But again, the names of base and height can be a little confusing uh, because so many students are, are conditioned to think that the base of an object has to be at the bottom, and that's not true. Uh, the base and the height of a triangle are simply going to be whatever side we decide is the base and the vertex across from it would be where the height is made from. It's just that the height always has to be perpendicular to the base wherever that is. So in the example that I have here with the uh, acute triangles we would see that uh, the base and the height, the height is always inside of the triangle. Well if I were to, let's see if I can get a, uh, well, this one will be easy, a right triangle. The, in a right triangle here, because it's a right triangle, this could be the base, and this could be the height, or, let me pick another color, this could be the base, and this oops, could be the height because those are a side with a, another segment that forms a right angle from it that goes to the vertex. So the two legs of a right triangle could be the base and the height. And so here, again, with a right triangle, I could kind of come this way and say, well, this, the hypotenuse, is the base, and this is the height. So for a right triangle, two of the altitudes, two of the figure size, two of the lengths that would be considered the height are actually on the triangle where one of them is inside of it. And here, if we make kind of an obtuse triangle, let me go ahead and just make a, an obtuse triangle real quick. So here, here if we make an obtuse triangle, if I say that this side is the base, well, then the height is going to be here, outside of the triangle. And if I say that, uh, pick another color here. If I say that this side here is the base, well, Here is where the height would be. So for an obtuse triangle, two of the altitudes, two of the heights are actually going to be outside of the triangle, and only one of them will be inside. So let's pick a, another color here. So here, if I say that this long side is the base, that's where the height would be here, OK? So for a triangle, any side can be the uh, base, and that's not supposed to be there. That will be, I made a separate page just for that. I forgot to delete it, though, so we'll just get rid of that stuff now. Sorry, I meant to, I have that, uh, I realized I wasn't going to fit it here, so I thought I would. I just added it to another page. So here we have uh, find the area of this parallelogram. And we have, uh, remember, any set of uh, opposite sides can be considered the base of the parallelogram. So there's more than one way that we can find the area. I can say that AD is a base. 
So if AD is a base, we can say that CF would be the height because that's the perpendicular distance between them. So base times height in this case gives me an area of 36 units squared. If I use segment AB as the base here, that means that uh, 8 is the base and 4.5 segment BD would be considered the height, the distance between them, but we get the same 36 units squared either way. Now what I was trying to say, which I had typed out here, but realized I wasn't going to fit, area is always going to be represented by some units squared, whether that unit is in inches or feet or, or, or whatever, it doesn't make any difference. Well, there's two basic explanations that I can give as far as why area is always going to be represented by something squared. Most students will understand the algebra explanation uh, first, so I'll go ahead and give that. Uh, here, if I say base times height for the area of a parallelogram, I'm not just multiplying the numbers together. I'm not just multiplying 5 by 4 in this case, but I'm multipl multiplying the units together, so centimeters times centimeters. So anytime I multiply something by itself, we square it, and that's where we get uh, units squared, or in this case, centimeters squared. For more of a geometry explanation, well, a polygon is two-dimensional, so it's... Uh, shape has to be represented with two dimensions, meaning that's why we would always say that its area is going to be some whatever unit squared to represent that it's two dimensional. So at this point here, find the area of the two polygons that we have. We have a triangle and a parallelogram. Go ahead and pause the video, find the area of these two shapes, and when you're done, hit play again and check your answers with mine. All right, so I have no choice but to assume that uh, you have paused the video and found the areas like I've asked you to do. Find the area of the triangle, area of a triangle. First of all, ladies and gentlemen, anytime you use an equation, anytime you use a formula, make sure you write that formula down. So I'm finding the area of a triangle, so I say area of a triangle is one half times the base times the height. In this case, the side that I have to use as the base, and this does work out to be that horizontal segment because we have the perpendicular segment from it to be the height. So in this case, the base would be 66, the height is 28, so that gives us an area of 924 square units. Here, find the area of the parallelogram. The area of the parallelogram, the base could be either the 17 or the 10, so base times height is going to use one of those two values. Well, the height that's given to me, the distance between two bases, is 7. So the base has to be the 17 in this case. So 17 times 7 gives me an area of 119 square units. So moving on, here we can still use the uh, formula for various polygons to find the measurement of some value that's missing. So here we have a triangle where the height and the base uh, are given to us, where, again, because this is a right triangle, the base and height are very arbitrary. The base could be 4H or the base could be H, but one side is four times longer than the other. So in this case, it looks like because they're saying H, the vertical segment is going to be the height, and the base is going to be four times that. But they are giving us the area to be 50 units squared or 50 square inches. So here, the base in this case is going to be 4h. So using the formula, area is 1 half base times height, substitute the values that we know. We know that the area is 50 and that the base is 4h. So simplify what we have here. On the left side, we don't really need to do anything, but on the right side, we can say half of 4, and that'll be 2, and h times h gives us h squared. So dividing both sides by 2 gives me uh, h squared to be 25. Now, to undo the square on the h, we take the square to both sides. Now, technically, when I take the square of two numbers, I always wind up with two answers. Or, let me rephrase that. I think I misspoke. Anytime I take the square root of a value, I always wind up with two answers, a positive answer and a negative answer. The positive answer is referred to as a principal value because that's usually what we want. Uh, but in this case, if I take the square root of 25, Using negative 5 as a value isn't going to be useful because I can't have the height of a figure to be negative 5 inches, so we can't use that. We would consider that to be an extraneous value. So here, the height is going to be 5 inches, so the base would be 20 inches. 
Now here is uh, kind of a, an application style question with area. Uh, now here we have like a little Roomba kind of vacuum cleaner going around vacuuming the area of this uh, figure. So we have this room, it's made up of either like a rectangle or a square, depending on how you want to look at it. Uh, now it tells us that it cleans uh, two meter, two square meters of carpet every eight minutes. So how long will it take to clean this room? Well, if I want to know how long it's going to take to clean the room, I have to know, well, what's the area of the room? Now the area in this case is a composite shape. So this is where we're using our area addition postulate. And we can actually find the area a few different ways. So based on how the problem was set up for us, depending on what you want to do, you could draw that horizontal red segment and divide it into a square that has five meters on either side and a rectangle that has nine meters by four meters or you could have drawn uh, on the left side of the screen you can see that black vertical line you could have drawn the line there or you could have enclosed the shaded area into one big quadrilateral and then found the area of the big shape and then subtracted the area of the unshaded portion but either way that you wanted to find the area in this case, we wind up with 61 meters squared. Well, now that I know that the area is 61 meters squared, how long does it take? Now, we're using our dimension, our unit analysis here. If you can see, uh, we're, we're cleaning 61 square meters by eight meters, or by eight minutes for every two meters squared. And the meters squared in the numerator and the meters squared in the denominator, those just simplify to be one. So we are left with our 244 minutes uh, for our time. So if I divide 244 by 60, uh, that's going to take about four hours to clean the carpet or to clean the room, whatever it is. So now at this time, go ahead and pause the video, answer these two questions. Uh, question number three, just find the length of a missing side of a parallelogram. And question number four is going to go back to that uh, composite room with the Roomba that's sweeping the floor. Uh, so you may want to refer back to that one and see how it goes. But go ahead and uh, pause the video and answer these two questions. And when you're done, hit play and come back and check your answers to see how I got them. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, ideally you have a couple of good answers here. Problem number three, we have a parallelogram. It's giving us the area and the height. We want to know what's the base. So area is base times height, substitute the values. In this case, 133 is equal to 19 times the base. Divide both sides by 19, and I get the base to be seven feet long. Going back to the Roomba question from the previous slide, here instead, now there's, there's four pieces that are one meter by two meter that can't be swept with the Roomba. Uh, so how long does it take? Well, we have to take that area that we can't sweep and we have to subtract it from the 61 that was already given to us. So there we go. So that means that we're only gonna be sweeping 53 square meters with the Roomba. Using that same uh, evaluation that we did where we're gonna say 53, the, the, the total area squared multiplied by eight minutes for every two meters squared. This gives us about 212 minutes, which works out to be about three and a half hours. It's actually like 3.53333 and so on. But, uh, but that's gonna take care of it for today. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions about uh, anything that you saw in the lesson, by all means, let me know what those questions are and I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, but until next time, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you soon.